All right, everybody, Steve here from Longpin Technology. I've got a brand new gimbal for my phone, so I'm excited to make a new video using this. Today, we're gonna to be reviewing the brand new Garmin Phoenix 6S and compare this to the Garmin 400 245, which is what I have been using for about the past year. Um, and my likes, my dislikes, and everything else in between. So stand by for an honest review of the Garmin Phoenix 6S. All right, everybody, Garmin Phoenix 6S. This is a pretty new device for 2019, late 2019, early 2020. Um, Phoenix is definitely Garmin's flagship device. So if you're not familiar with the Phoenix line, Garmin throws everything under the sun into this smartwatch. And they've got GPS, they have compass, they have altimeter, they have barometer, they have removable straps, it's waterproof, you can use it for triathlons, you can do all kinds of interesting stuff with this watch. Um, but the only downside, in my opinion, other than the cost, is that it has a lot of complexity, and I'll get into that here in a second. Um, so if you're looking for a smart watch, a sport watch, an active watch, I would absolutely consider the Phoenix Success, but I would definitely do some with some hesitation based on what I'm about to tell you. First thing that I really don't like about this watch is the weight. It comes in at about 61 grams, and so the Forerunner series, for example, here's a Forerunner 245, which is my second favorite Garmin watch, weighs in at about 38 grams, and so almost half the weight. And you can see the size difference between the two, and even almost the thickness difference between the two as well. The Phoenix is slightly thicker. Um, the Phoenix does come with a little bit longer battery life, but not substantially longer. Um, I get about four days on this guy. I get about five to six days on this guy, so a little bit different, but not substantially different. Um, but the biggest difference between the series, other than the weight, is obviously gonna be the included features. And so. What I mean about Garmin cramming everything into this, I mean, if you look through very briefly the stuff that you can get, you get instant access to weather and you get detailed weather information. You can look through histories. You can look through, um, you know, current forecast. You can do altimeter, barometer, compass, like I said, so you can actually see the, the altimeter. You can have a north heading on here. You can change the screen to the altimeter over your last several hours, the barometer readings, um, which is really nice to have. You have your health stats. You have music controls body battery, and you can customize these things too. Um, but it really does allow you to do anything and everything that a Garmin can do. You can have maps on here, which is also super, super cool. Um, if you've ever had decided that you wanna check out where you are, like look at you know, what's around you, you can load a map and you can pan and zoom. Um, it is a little bit cumbersome to use. You can see that if I wanna move this around, I've gotta like press some buttons and I have to then um, use the keys on here if you go like the up button, pan, zoom, right? You can zoom out. You can also use this button to go up and down. And it's just a little clunky since it's not a touch screen and it does take a little bit of time for it to load, but it's not the end of the world in terms of its usability. It does work. It just takes a little bit of time to kind of play around with the buttons and figure out exactly what you want to do. In addition to the maps, you've got all your sports. You've got bike, run, pool, swim, yoga, trail run. And I mean, the list is almost endless. If I go down here and go to add, you can actually see all the different things that are available. Stuff like multi-sport, track me, like I said, trail run, treadmill, hike, climb, bike, indoor mountain bike, and all these things. Some of them use GPS and some of them don't. Depends on if they're outside or inside. Um, the other cool thing is with the ski and snowboard features, you actually do get access to built-in ski trails on here if the, the resort is loaded into the system, which is cool. So if you are a skier or snowboarder, you can have access to those runs, which is pretty neat. Sup, row, indoor, kayak, golf, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and you can add these all to your custom list so you have quick access to them. Like my favorites are bike, run, yoga. And so uh, it's easy for me to do that. You can also navigate to points of interest around the map, around me, back to start, which is cool. So if you do get lost, you can always get back to home. You can look for courses, so you can create a course on here using like previous events. So like if you go for a run, then you can turn that into a course and you can follow the directions or bike ride, um, et cetera. And so that's what I mean about it being like really, really complex. Um, there's just a lot of details. And so you can change so many settings. I mean, you can go in here and go to navigate settings, right? And just follow me through these menus, right? So if I go to Let's just say um, we'll go to uh, data screens, right? Here's one data screen. Here's two data screens. Here's three data screens. Here's four data screens. And I can go in and I can customize these and I can reorder it, right? And I can move stuff around. And I mean, you can literally get lost in the data screens of this watch. It is so complex. 
Now, if you're a data nerd and you really want to have, if you have the time to tweak this and to set it and to make all these changes manually and do it all on your own, then great. But you, I mean, seriously, like this would be hours and hours of time to try and get this thing customized to exactly where you want it. Um, and that may be some good for some people or some people might just want to be like, I don't have time for that crap. I don't want to spend an hour or two hours trying to set up my damn watch. I just want it to work. So it can do that. You can just use the out of the box settings, you know, go for a run. Like I went for a run this morning. Um, I can look at my past, you know, my histories. I can see what I did. If I, I think if I go through and look down here and go to either my health stats or maybe my body battery, it'll tell me about the event that I did. Um, well, I don't see it, but anyway, you can add that like previous activity to the screen. You can look through it, but um, like I said, it's just very, very complex and you can really, really change things. And that can be great for some people. I mean, I appreciate the ability to change the watch face. So like this is a custom watch face and you can have other custom watch faces, which is really cool. So like you can go in here and you can say, uh, today I feel like I'm gonna add a um, copycat of an Omega Seamaster. And so like you get a little Omega Seamaster clone watch face, which is pretty darn cool. Um, you can add metrics to it, right? So you can go in and you can change a watch that has different data points. And so you can like pick this watch, which has your barometer, your temperature outside, what time the sun sets, what's your current heart rate, where your battery percentage is, the date, your VO2 max, your last activity. And so it's really neat that you can do that. And I really do love that about this watch. Um, but in particular, the other nice thing is that it does have a sapphire lens. And so you can, you know, prevent scratches by having that sapphire lens on there. That's really cool. Built-in heart rate monitor on the back does work rather nicely. Um, it's not going to be as accurate as a chest strap monitor, but that's not the end of the world for a lot of people. Um, you know, they just want a current act, you know, current measure of their heart rate and what they do during their activities. Like I said, the um, quick release straps are really neat. So you just press down on this and these will come out. And so you can like put a regular watch band on here, which is also really awesome. You don't have to use the Garmin straps and they just click right back in. So that's a nice feature to have. And it's a pretty small size. I mean, I don't have a really big wrist. And so I believe that this guy measures at about 40 millimeters. And so for me, this really does fit my hand and my wrist really well. Um, you know, I, I compare this to my other nice watches. Like I've got, you know, an Omega and I have a Seiko and I have... Daniel Wellington and they're all in that like 38 to 40 millimeter maybe 41 millimeter size and this to me this is the perfect size for me I mean they, it comes the s is the smaller size but you can get it in the bigger size so if you have a bigger wrist you may want to consider looking at the uh, traditional Garmin Phoenix series but the features don't change between the s and the standard Garmin Phoenix um, if you did want to look at this and compare it to something like the Forerunner you know, for example, both of these guys do music, so you can sync music to the both of them. Um, this also does have quick release bands, but you can see it doesn't have the pin in there. So if you wanted to add a different watch band, you'd have to just take this guy out like so and then put it in. And so anyway, it's a little bit, maybe that's more cumbersome. I'm not sure. This to me is a little bit better because if I had another watch band with other pins, it's really easy to get in and out of that. Um, but side by side, they're really great devices. I mean, I don't know which one I'm going to choose. I think I'm, in fact, going to end up sticking with the Forerunner just because of the weight. I mean, 61 grams, well, that might not sound like a lot, is, is it feels heavy on your wrist, especially if you run. You know, as you move your arms up and down, this really does feel like a lug slug on your arm. And so I just don't like that. I like how thin this is. I like how light this is. I like the battery I get on this. Um, and if I'm missing out on stuff like the altimeter barometer compass, then so be it. Uh, or an extra day or two of battery life, and so be it. Um, the other thing to talk about with this, which is just absurd, and the reason why I can't stand Garmin some days of the week, is that they they still don't have an easy way to navigate to add routes to this device without using a goddamn laptop. And so you need a computer to be able to plug in to this and use the USB cable, and actually sync the device to your laptop. But what if you don't have a laptop? Well, then you're stuck, right? You have to use a computer to, to drag and drop like GPX files, drag and drop routes to it, anything that you want to be able to use that's not just part of the device, right? That's an external data source. So if it's from Strava or Ride with GPS or GPX file or any other, you know, any other thing that you like to use software wise, you have to go through a computer, which is frustrating because it has a smartphone app. The Garmin smartphone app, and actually, they have two smartphone apps, count it two, which is also stupid and annoying. They have the Garmin Connect app, and then they have the Garmin Connect IQ app. And so the Garmin Connect IQ app is where you get these custom watch faces from. 
and some other stuff. And the Garmin Connect app is what connects the watch to your phone and does all the syncing and stuff. And so it just feels really incomplete and feels really, really old and, you know, just not up to par with some of the other apps and devices that are out there. Like if you were to compare this to Wahoo, you know, bike computer, you can sync all of your data and stuff all through the Wahoo app. And so it doesn't require you to go out and get a computer and a USB cable to do it. So just that alone um, can be frustrating and tiresome for a lot of people. But for me, I do like the fit and finish of these watches. I mean, they are by far my primary go-to for a device. Like I don't want to wear an Apple watch. Well, number one, I don't have an Apple phone, but I wouldn't wear an Apple watch because A, they look stupid because they're square. B, they got about a day of battery life, which is ridiculous. And C, I hate being an Apple fanboy and just having my entire ecosystem live through the Apple lifestyle. Um, Garmin really, really does a really great job with their GPS and with their sort of device fit and finish. I mean, this feels like a high quality premium device. Um, and I think a lot of people probably feel the same way. The Bluetooth for the uh, headphones works really well. So if you do sync music to this, you can go in and you can play music right away. Like it's real easy. I mean, you just hold this button down um, and then you can go, sorry, you hold, I think it's this button down. I don't even know because it's so complicated, <laughs> but you can go to music. And then in here, you can like pick your library, you can say connect to headphones, and then you can play songs. And so it's really awesome to not have to have a phone with you and just have Bluetooth headphones in your watch and be able to play music while you run. Um, that to me is probably one of the best features about these new, the new generation of smartwatches. This connection is also really great. They upgraded that little clappy, crappy alligator clip to one that just plugs right into the watch, which is really nice and solid. And so you end up getting a nice solid connection. Charging's really fast. I mean, I charge mine at my bedside when I go to sleep, um, but it does charge within a couple hours. So you can just kind of top it off if you run low on battery. Um, yeah, so all in all, you know, I really do like this device, but I do have some problems with Garmin in general. And I do have some problems with the Phoenix series just because of the weight and it's sort of, they crammed a bunch of stuff in there, which again, you really gotta be a data nerd. You really have to be a techno nerd. And you really have to want to spend like, probably an hour or more setting up your watch um, and, and reading a manual, <laughs> which I'm not really sure a lot of people do these days or want to do. But I do like it. I do think it's worth it. It is an expensive device. I think it's $699 or $700, something like that. Um, so it is going to cost a pretty penny for a lot of people. Um, so if you're in the market for a good quality device and you're not thinking you're going to want to spend that money, definitely check out the 4Runner series, especially the 245. Again, one of my favorite devices. I really think it's top of the line as well. So hope you guys enjoy this little video of the Phoenix 6S. Don't forget to check out everything else I have on YouTube. Rate, comment, and subscribe. Thanks, guys.